Hello and welcome to our P&O Arvia vlog series. In this episode, there's a rush to the shops after an onboard surprise. We celebrate an onboard victory. We get to experience the first time that Iona and Arvia meet. And be sure to watch until the end to find out why there's embarrassment in the clubhouse. Hello and welcome to our second to last sea day. Yes, we are well on our way back to Southampton now, aren't we? Yeah, it's gone very, very quick. And apart from a few teething problems, we have thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk about our day today then. So this morning we woke up at about 9am, so yeah. not too early, but didn't need to really because it's a sea day, we got nowhere to go. <laughs> <laughs> this morning then, the first thing that we did, we headed down to deck six, where we grabbed ourselves a couple of Costa coffees. Yep, yeah, lovely little uh, Costa coffee cafe there, very, very popular, and even this morning it was very busy as well. So we joined the virtual queue to go into breakfast, but we were pretty much called straight away. So we took our costas into uh, breakfast with us. Yep, so the Zenith is open till 10 a.m. on a sea day, which is absolutely fantastic for breakfast. Yeah. Uh, when we got to the Zenith main dining room, they sat us in a beautiful little table, just tucked away right by a window. I, I think it's got to be the best place we've sat the whole time. We ordered breakfast straight away. I had cereal to start, Frosties, in fact, because normally I'd go for crunchy nut but they didn't have any, so I went for Frosties instead. And I opted to go just for a little yoghurt, fruit yoghurt, to start the day as well. Yeah. After my cereal, I also had cooked breakfast of two hash browns, two pieces of bacon, one sausage and beans. And I went for the Eggs Benedict again because they are absolutely fantastic on board. I've had them a number of times in the main dining room and I've thoroughly enjoyed it every single time. So I thought, I'm on all day, why not? Yeah, and the service was good at breakfast, so we had another couple of uh, coffees as well given to us while we were waiting. The waiters also brought us some toast in a toast rack. We had jam and marmalade on the table, as well as a jug of milk. Yeah, you can also request honey, which comes in a little sealed jar as well. So breakfast didn't take us too long at all today. No. Great news, nice and easy, bit of a breeze. After breakfast then, we headed out onto deck for a little bit of a walk to walk off some of those breakfast calories. And uh, we wanted just to show off how impressive the promenade on Arvia is. So we did a little recording and it took us about 10 minutes to walk the whole way around. So it is a really, really impressive promenade deck. And it is. It's a really nice walk though, isn't it? Especially those areas that come out off the side of the atrium are really nice to walk across, aren't they? They're the only one of the only bits on the ship that's got a lower glass that's not yeah. above head height. So it does make the views from there the best views you can get on the ship, really. Yeah. On the previous night, we came back to the cabin and there was a note in the door. And some of you may have seen in the news and in the newspapers that the Arvia Maiden Voyage hasn't exactly gone to plan. What p &O have done is they have given everybody a £150 onboard cruise credit per person for a maximum of two people per cabin. So what we did is we went down and had a look at the shop and it was like nothing we have ever seen before. So essentially a lot of people hadn't accounted for this additional £150-£300 on board cruise credit and they thought they'd go to the shops and make full use of it. And they? Yeah, the shops are pretty, pretty cleared <laughs> of stock. Especially the Arvia store that had a lot of the Arvia merchandise in um, basically empty. They've filled it with things with like flip-flops and hats and things now because it's just it's cleared. Clear. There were huge queues. It's like a Black Friday sale on our view. <laughs> <laughs> exactly that. Very, very busy. So was the future cruise area where people booking future cruises because I think they have allowed people to put some of that money towards future cruises as well. There were definitely a lot of people waiting in line to book those cruises. The £300 that we received was very nice, very unexpected. Yeah. They didn't have to give us that. Overall, myself and Tom, we've really enjoyed this cruise. We have. We have really enjoyed Absolutely it. Absolutely fab time. And to be fair, that money will go towards paying off our drinks package, really, rather than uh, any RV merchandise as such. Everyone is free to spend it on how they wish. And yeah. 
to be honest, there's a few people who've said to us that I never would have bought this perfume on board, but now I've got the money, why not buy it? Or a new bag or some jewellery. There's lots of options on board, quite a few shops, even a new watch. So why not? Thank you very much, P&O. Um, it was around lunchtime now, wasn't it? So we headed to the glass house for a couple of glasses of wine. Yes, yeah, so on uh, previous visits to the glass house, we've actually been refused any glass of wine that was 6 95 or less. Those of you that watched our previous vlogs, we've sort of discussed it. And myself and Tom were not very happy about this at all. We actually spoke to a number of people on board to try and sort of explain and get it sort of justified as to why we weren't allowed these wines as part of our package. And we're happy to say that it, uh, after a few discussions, uh, meeting with the food and beverage manager, um, just to find out why, and on behalf of everybody else, we had quite a lot of messages from our followers to say what is the new package, what are the new terms and conditions. Well, we're quite happy to say they've reversed them and it's back to how it was before. It meant we could pop along to the glass house today and try some of their wines that were 6 95 or under, um, which does give you much more variety than what they were offering us before. Previously, it was a very limited selection of white and red wines. Yeah, that they were. it's the ones that were offered at any other bar. The ones that are on the glass house menu, you couldn't have anything on the glass house menu. But that's changed. So anything under 6 95 you can now have. Um, so the package is back to how it has been before, which is good news for us. So it and good news for other passengers as good well. Good news for all the passengers. While we, we had two glasses of wine, while we were drinking our second glass, the captain did an announcement, a very special announcement, to say that Iona is nearby. So it's the first time the two sisters would ever see each other. And we were about to pass through in about 10 minutes, weren't we? So we headed out onto deck to get some pictures of Iona, and it was pretty special. Yep, they'd somehow managed to, to agree a half a mile cruise distance, which was absolutely absolutely spectacular. It was just really, really nice. Everybody was out on deck. You could see all the senior staff from the bridge because we positioned ourselves right at yeah. the front of the ship. The captain gave us a wave, Wait, didn't he? Yes, he did. <laughs> Um, it was just something really quite unique that perhaps you wouldn't necessarily see on other cruises, two sister ships cruising past each other for the first time. Yeah, particularly these two ships because they are going to be positioned at quite different parts of the world. So it's nice to get them to pass each other. Just for a bit of information, Iona is on the way to the Med and Arvia is on the way home. After being on deck and watching Iona sail by, we were both feeling a little bit peckish, so we made our way to the Keys for a little bit of lunch. Yep, I had the filled Yorkshire pudding again, so it was uh, roast beef today with carrot, cabbage, parsnip and cauliflower cheese with two lots of gravy in there, so it was very, very nice. Really tasty. The beef is probably the best one I've had. Uh, it's quite impressive that they can actually make a really good Yorkshire pudding as mm. well. I opted to go for the chicken katsu curry mm. with noodles and also the stir-fried beef in black bean sauce. Yeah, you had two noodles. dishes, you were quite hungry. I was hungry. really hungry. And to be fair, they were both absolutely delicious. Obviously from Asian Fusion uh, in the Keys, it was a little bit spicy, but I had a pint of Heineken that helped. <laughs> After our time in the Keys, we had a little wonder around the ship. We popped up to the Sky Dome, and we did notice that the pool was closed in the Sky Dome, so I don't know whether that's to do with the waves and things again. But we enjoyed a little walk around the ship. Toured some of the places that perhaps we hadn't been before, so we got a good look inside the main theatre, yeah. and also the Meridian and Zenith restaurants, all for our ship tour, which I'll include a link in the description now. Yeah, we also popped into the cinema. We had to actually pop into all three screens because the first two doors we opened were, <laughs> were full, sorry if it was you, were full of people watching a film. So it was only in the last one we managed to get a shot of the cinema itself. After all that exploring then, uh, we made our way, well, we've made our way back to our cabin yeah. uh, to get ready for this evening. Well, what an evening we had. Um, our evening started off with a surprise formal night. Yeah, a little bit unexpected really. Prior to boarding the cruise, there's a lovely little planner that shows you what nights the formal nights are on and which nights are casual. And unfortunately... We didn't know about it. No. I don't think it was on the planner at all. No, it wasn't. And after <laughs> speaking to some of our fellow passengers, I think everyone pretty much had a panic run around to try and uh, grab a shirt or a dress or whatever it might be, just to stick on for formal life. But 
Try to say that still 90% of passengers were in formal gear. So unusually for Arvia and Iona, which only has two formal night on a two week cruise. There were three on this one. We were, wasn't expecting it at all. Yeah, apparently there's uh, the, the third one is because it's Arvia's maiden seasonal voyage. Yeah. So uh, we had a 7pm reservation in the Limelight Club this evening. We got to see the wonderful uh, Selena Cherry. Now Selena used to be, well still is, part of the 90s girl band The Honeys and we had a fantastic night watching her, didn't we? Yeah, she was absolutely incredible. So this was our second time in the Limelight. So yeah, similar setup to our last time in there. We were introduced to the Limelight Club by the Limelights and Emily, who's the host. She then let us know the structure of, of the evening. It started off with an entree and then a starter. Then we had a performance by Emily and the Limelights. We then had the main and the dessert and then around a 45 minute set from Selena Cherry. Unfortunately, the menu for tonight's Limelight was exactly the same as our last Limelight experience, wasn't it? Yes, yeah, so I think that's just timing on our part really because the menus do change. It just so happened that the two nights we booked, we dropped in on the same night, the menu was the same. So never mind. We knew what we liked and then we were able to order quite quickly, weren't we? For starters, we both had the chicken presse. In terms of the menu and the structure, there are three starters, four mains, and only two desserts. Yeah. So there is quite a limited choice, especially as myself and Tom don't eat fish. So we opted for the chicken presse again, which is really, really tasty. We had it last time and it was very, very nice. Yeah, uh, for our main course, we once again had the beef. I do think looking at other people's meals that the beef is the most substantial meal on there because the, there is a pork option, but it's pork Wellington with pudding. black pudding, um, but it's probably only about mm, that big, yeah. would you say one piece? Really well, small. the uh, bit of beef is bit more substantial. On there you get a Yorkshire pudding, you also get some veg and a potato. A potato. A potato. The red cabbage is beautiful though. Yeah. Really enjoyed the beef. Uh, again, just fell apart. Yeah, you get a choice of two options for it to be cooked. Um, either medium or well done is the choices we were given um, and we both went for medium. And it was beautiful. And then for dessert, we both had exactly the same again. We both had the chocolate brownie. Yeah, I opted for the chocolate brownie this time and it was absolutely delicious. You tried the panna cotta the previous occasion and it is like a panna cotta with a champagne jelly on top. So it's a bit unusual and there were a few people questioned to say, is this actually a panna cotta? Yeah. But I'm, I'm quite a chocolate fan, so we both went for the brownie. Uh, Selena then came on and performed a 45 minute set. Unfortunately, um, she only played one song from the Honeys. Um, however, looking round, myself and Tom were the only ones singing along. Yeah, so... <laughs> Yeah, we really enjoyed the Honey song, we would have liked a few more, but um, the rest of the songs she played were fantastic. She did kind of like a disco set, she did a lot of disco music, a lot of divas. Really, really enjoyed her set, it definitely had us clapping along, dancing along, and it was much, much, much better than we were expecting. And it was a lot busier in there as well, wasn't it? It was. We thought it was going to be quiet as it's coming to the end of the cruise, but still really busy. All in all, our time in the Limelight Club was spectacular and we would definitely do it again. So seeing two acts on two different nights and we would love to come and do it again. A tip is as well, make sure you book the Limelight Club ahead of your cruise because it is cheaper in price than booking on board. The Limelight is an intimate experience. We strongly recommend you give it a go because yeah. it is fantastic. Yeah. And not a lot of cruise lines offer that type of experience. No, we really enjoyed it, so uh, make sure you pre-book. So this evening in the Headline Theatre, it's Tom Ball, but between our time in the Limelight Club and seeing Tom Ball, we would normally have gone up to the Sky Dome and Odyssey were performing in the Sky Dome, so there is a lot going on the ship but we just didn't have much of a window, did we? So we didn't do that tonight as we would normally would do. Instead, we sat in the glass house and had a couple of glasses of wine. Yeah, made full use of our ultimate drinks package in the glass house now that it's fully accepted and the staff are, are aware. Okay. So yes, you can choose any glass under 6 95 included in the ultimate drinks package from the glass house. And we definitely took advantage of that. So we had a couple of glasses of reds, didn't we? Yeah. And then we headed off to the theatre to see Tom Ball. 
This was Tom Ball's second show on board and it was equally as busy. Pre-booking is strongly advised, although there were some people outside who hadn't booked to see him. And fortunately, there were a few places, but only a few. By the time the performance started, the theatre was full. He had a very warm welcome when he arrived on stage. And to be honest, he didn't let us down. Another fantastic performance from Tom Ball. He's such a warm and genuine person. And when he sings, he sings in such a, a way we're feeling. He's, so, he's just fantastic. He sang a song from Les Mis, and I thought that blew the audience away, didn't it, really? Yeah, he definitely has such an incredible voice, but he is so personable that as soon as he starts talking, you just like him because he's such a genuine guy. So keep an eye out for Tom Ball. And if you haven't heard of Tom Ball, um, and perhaps you're a viewer from the US, he is actually appearing in America's Got Talent All Stars. So keep an eye out for him because he'll be appearing on that soon. After the amazing uh, performance by Tom Ball in the Headliners Theatre, we quickly hurried across the ship to Decade and the Clubhouse. Yes, because this evening was Emmanuel Sanubi adult only comedy performance. Yes, so it's strongly recommended that it is adults only. Some people did choose to bring their children with them, which probably isn't advised because some of the language and some of the stories that he used are very adult in theme but he was hilarious really good uh, just be warned if you do bring your children along he will pick on them and use them as part of his jokes if that had been me as a 14 year old i would have died yeah we won't embarrassed yeah me. we won't say what he said because if this is youtube and we'll be wiped off <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it's, uh, yeah, I, I would have run out there. <laughs> I don't think I'd ever want to leave my cabin again. <laughs> the clubhouse itself was absolutely rammed. Um, you needed to be there at least half an hour before the show started. And there were people who were getting quite annoyed because there, there were definitely no seats available no. anywhere. And the, the back of the room was full of standing um, people, wasn't it? So definitely get there early if there's a lighter night show. The comedians on board have been really, really popular in the clubhouse though, Very popular, they? very popular. It, you could probably fill the theatre if you do a light night show yeah. in the theatre, you could probably fill it because it is a, a great experience. But it does feel a bit more like pub clubby type of place rather than a theatre show, doesn't it? I yeah. suppose. But that's the nature of the clubhouse. After an amazing comedy performance, hilarious, hilarious. Yeah, strongly recommend, he was incredible. We then headed up to the buffet. Um, again, selection wasn't great, but there was chips. There was chips today and a little bit of curry again. So I did have a little bit of chips and curry, didn't Vegetable I? Vegetable samosas. Vegetable samosa. Well, we think it was a curry. I don't know, it was some type of stew, maybe, who knows. Uh, it was very busy in there though, wasn't it? Very, very busy. But I think that's the nature of having a lighter comedian show. Everybody came up after that, yeah. didn't they? We then proceeded to try our luck in the casino and claim our free drinks. So the free drinks are uh, when you claim points after you've spent money in the machines. Those points then, uh, if you contact one of the casino staff, can be used to claim free drinks. Yeah, so in order to get your free drinks, you do need to approach a member of staff within the casino. When we asked the casino uh, worker what, what drinks we could have, he said any. But those any drinks are actually limited to what you can get on the ultimate package. So anything under six ninety five. So it wasn't really much of a benefit to us because we have the package. But if you don't, it, it's definitely worth uh, making sure you claim those free drinks. Yeah, so we spent a little time in the casino, just having one last drink, um, and then it was time for bed. Time for bed. So um, that's the end of our last but one sea day. Yep, so tomorrow is our final sea day on board. I'm sure it's going to be incredibly busy with uh, getting preparations for disembarking in Southampton. Yeah. Um, and yeah, stay tuned. Uh, thanks for watching uh, our penultimate sea day on Arvia. If you've got any comments or questions, just drop them in the box below and we'll get back to you. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching. Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching. We've got lots more content available on our YouTube channel, so press that subscribe button. If you're interested in receiving daily updates, we're available on most social media platforms. Just search for Tom and Dom Travel.